back with another one. Shang Chi pitch meeting. We watched it. I really enjoyed this movie. Or should we say Shang Chi? I don't know. Yeah, let's check let's... this out. <laughs> so you have a new Marvel movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I figured this could be our first foray into the world of martial arts. You know, other than that Iron Fist show we did. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that never happened. Uh, no, it did. It I remember with that happened. guy from Game of Thrones. No, we never it did that. So what's the movie? <laughs> well, sir, I figure we could do a movie about Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Bracelets. <laughs> Isn't it Ten Rings? <laughs> yeah, but I thought it could look cool if they were worn around the wrists, you know. And I think at a certain point a ring becomes a bracelet, scientifically speaking. Uh, no. I think at a certain point a bracelet becomes a ring, but then if a ring expands, it's always a ring. <laughs> that sounds like it makes sense. Okay, ten no, rings really it is. Great. Amazing. So what happens in the movie? <laughs> well, we're gonna meet Shang-Chi, right? But he calls himself Sean, and he lives in San Francisco. Okay. And he's friends with this girl named Katie, and they work as valets together. How do we know they're best friends? Because one of her first lines is, we've been friends for ten years. Oh, <laughs> best friends love stating how long you've been best friends with them. Yeah, they do. So they're in love, I imagine. I mean, one's a boy and one's a girl. Girl. No, they're actually, they're just friends. They're just friends. Are they just friends though? Okay. Okay, so anyway, one day they're taking the bus together and Shang-Chi gets attacked by a bunch of assassins. Oh no. Yeah, so he's gonna suddenly reveal that he's like an insanely good martial artist and he's gonna have this incredible fight scene with them on this bus. Yeah, he's fighting some bad guys on a bus. Yeah, they're like doing martial arts and he's using the environment, you know, he uses his jacket at a certain point. Oh, a relatively grounded, well choreographed fight scene? That's actually refreshing. And the bus's brakes get cut and Katie has to drive the bus and Shang-Chi dives and the bus gets cut in half. Oh, there's the Marvel over the topness. Okay, gotcha. You go. So Katie's like, hey, what's up with you secretly being a martial arts master? And he's like, yeah, I'm secretly a martial arts master, and I gotta go see my sister now. <laughs> oh, he does? Yeah, see, he got this postcard that he and thinks is from her, so he needs to fly right. to China because he thinks she's in danger, too. Gotcha. So he's like, bye, Katie, I gotta go. And Katie's like, no, I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh, best friends love coming on dangerous adventures with you off of little to no information. Yeah, they do. So wait, why is Katie going? So we can have some comic relief around that people can explain <laughs> things to. Oh, very helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happens when they get there? Well, we're gonna meet Shang-Chi's sister, Sha Ling. And what's her deal? Well, after Sha their Ling. mom died, their father, Wen Wu, put Shang-Chi through torturous, brutal training for years, right? Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but she wasn't allowed to train with the men, so, you know, it was pretty unfair to her. Yeah, I mean, what a jerk of a father. How come <laughs> she doesn't get the brutal torture? Oh, wait, I don't know how I feel about this morally. So since she couldn't train with them, she watched them and taught herself how to be even better than that. But how could she learn like the grabbing moves and stuff? Wouldn't she need people to practice with? No, not even. Oh, okay. So anyway, it turns out that Shang-Chi receiving a postcard was actually a setup by his father and he has them both captured. Oh no. Yeah, so they head to his place because he wanted to basically reunite the family and he thinks he knows how to bring their mom back from the dead using these pendants and a map and stuff. Wait, so why did he send assassins after them? Oh, well, he yeah. says he knew they wouldn't be able to kill his children. So then why try? So we can have some fight scenes in the movie. <laughs> That's a good point. So what's this guy's deal anyway? Oh, uh, well, he's 4,000 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he has that. these ten I rings, know. and he leads a group called the Ten Rings. So what do these rings do, exactly? Oh, all kinds of stuff, sir. They make you immortal. Also, <laughs> other things involving energy or something. Oh, that's pretty oh vague, God. man. Yeah, this way they can do whatever I want them to do from scene to scene. Smart. Mm -hmm. And so he's actually the real Mandarin, and that Trevor Slattery guy from Iron Man 3, that was his doing. Oh, man, I love I love that we can retroactively make our unpopular decisions seem calculated and deliberate and important. It is pretty sweet that we can do that, sir. And so what are we saying the Ten Rings organization does exactly? Oh, they've been doing stuff for <laughs> thousands of years so what immense you do? can't possibly <laughs> fathom it, but also vague enough that you probably wouldn't have heard of it. Gotcha. God, how many <laughs> underground organizations that secretly control everything are there in the MCU at this oh, point? Wow. Thousands. Oh, wow, oh, yeah. Wow. Maybe we should find a new thing. No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Wenwu explains That's that he's been getting these messages from their mother from the grave and Shang-Chi's like dad she's gone you sound crazy he doesn't believe that his father may have stumbled upon something crazy like that no sir he's like there's no way you sound insane papa he doesn't think that his 4,000 year old immortal father could have possibly stumbled upon something in this vein doesn't even entertain the idea and he's right oh okay great so anyway all the good characters get put in a cell because they don't want to cooperate oh man it's gonna be hard to get out of there actually it's gonna be super 
super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Sha Ling had already escaped from there, and they're left unguarded, and Trevor Slattery is down there, and he can help them escape. Oh, wow, that is convenient. <laughs> it is, convenient. and Trevor has this little super. furry, mythical oh, creature friend fur. that makes little yeah, squeaking yeah. noises that only he can understand. How? Unclear. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but I guess it could be fun if it's just a Very couple weird. of, you know, playful, semi-understanding back and forth. The creature's gonna give precise driving directions that are <laughs> crucial to the plot. Oh, it is. Precise, okay. You see, they need like to go GDS. to this place called Talo, where their mom is from, but they need to drive through a mythical forest to get there. In a beautiful BMW. Okay, seems like you're probably getting a lot of money to specify that. So they get to this place and they find out that Wen Wu's plan is actually really, really bad. Oh, it is? You see, this big friggin' soul-sucking demon called Dweller in Darkness is pretending to be their mom to trick Wen Wu into releasing him. Oh, soul-sucking demons are tight. Right. No, they're not. You're right, I don't know what possessed me to say that. Anyway, so then Katie's gonna do a couple of hours of archery. Oh, that's nice, just for fun or for the story? It's so she can have something to do in the third act. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, everything's been pretty much explained now, so at this point in a story, this kind of character either dies or picks up a new skill for the third act. That makes sense. So then there's gonna be this big fight between the people of Talo and the Ten Rings. With color-coordinated weaponry? Of course, blue versus red. <laughs> Fantastic. And meanwhile, Wen Wu's gonna start punching this wall to try to release his dead wife, but he's actually releasing these tiny little soul-sucking demons. Oh no. Yeah, so then all the human characters need to join forces and fight. An army of soulless CGI enemies that the characters can violently kill without the audience feeling weird about it. Exactly. Wow, 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 wow. And then Shang-Chi has to fight his father. Oh, wow, a grounded fight with very personal stakes? That's actually a nice change of... And they shoot colored energy blasts at each other, and a giant demon pops out, and a giant dragon pops out and fights it too. Oh, there's the Marvel over the topness. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah and so when Wu dies, and then the next ten minutes are gonna be just whatever the computer is able to render. Oh, they can render a whole visual mess of craziness. Can it be super colorful? Full, but also they somehow entirely gray. You know it. Amazing. And so then Shang-Chi manages to kill the demon with the Ten Rings and save the day. So what are the Ten Rings exactly? Do we find out? Oh, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a post credit scene where it's like, oh, these are probably made out of something that's gonna be important eventually. Stay tuned. Nice. No better way to end a Marvel movie than with a commercial for future projects. Mm -hmm. And that should about do it, actually. What is that? That's just the Marvel movie checklist. There's a checklist? Of course there's a checklist. And you've done great, my friend, big messy CGI battle in the third act, <laughs> secret evil organization, Check. color coded energy Check. blasts. We got cameos from other Marvel movies. Trevor Slattery, Wong, and Abomination. <laughs> does the main character remove his shirt to reveal a six pack at a certain point? <laughs> he does, yeah, great physique. Well, fantastic. If we could Check. just add a tease that another Marvel character is off doing something important, that'd be great too. On it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Captain Marvel was at the end. <laughs> yes, she was, and she had something important to do. Yes, she went <laughs> off. So anyway, so we really enjoyed this movie. I did. You I know, did. I really didn't know what to expect going into this movie. I thought I was going to like it. I really didn't know too much about this character. Mm. I read about him. I watched videos on his character, but I never, I had never read the comics. Yeah. So uh, going into it, it was like fresh character for me, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Not knowing too much about it. And I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. What'd yeah. you think? I mean, I I agree with you. I don't know anything about this character, um, but I think it's great. It's a different, um, you know, it's a different vision and different story. And the, the fight scenes, they were amazing. Like, they were yeah. really good. I mean, he did an amazing job. Um, yep. And, and I loved it. I loved it. I, I really did. Everything. The, the connection between the main character mm -hmm. with the friend. Um, and then even the father, the connection. He he did the villain, which is the father, right? The Mandarin. The Mandarin. Um, you know, it was like hard because you kind of fell for him. <clears throat> but then he was bad. But then he was good. And you kind of feel sad. It was like a mix of emotions. Yeah, those are the best villains. Yeah. The best villains for me are the villains that are not clearly villains like right. in this movie he was almost like in a gray area where at times where you kind of empathize with him because he lost his wife and then at times he seemed like he was a good father but at the same time there was times that you could tell he was ruthless well, and yeah. he was the leader of this underground operation right you know so it was a very it, to me it was one of the better uh marvel villains mm -hmm. that i've seen today i love a good villain 
to me, a good uh, comic book movie is only as good as its villain. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, let's, for example, uh, The Dark Knight with the Joker. The, what mo- made that movie great was the Joker was amazing. The Avengers, Thanos, Thanos was amazing. Right. You know? So you got to have that good villain. And this one, I feel like they really pulled it off. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a very good one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Overall, I enjoy this movie. I was actually so happy with it that I would want to see it again. I would watch this one again. Yeah. I would definitely watch this one again. Again, some people said it felt a little bit long. Not to me. I enjoyed the whole ride. Yeah, no, not to me. Uh, it had a good balance of action, comedy, story, mm-hmm. some serious moments. Mm-hmm. You know, it was you know it wasn't just like too much of one thing. It had its funny moments and its serious moments, and at the same time. It was kind of beautiful to watch, especially at the end. Oh my god, yeah. That world at the end with mm-hmm. these like creatures, these majestic creatures, Colors. like the lions and, and the village. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, they were so like the huge lions amazing in the village. Looking. Yes. You know? And then the uh the dragging at the end reminded oh. me of the, the never ending story that we talked about. I know, I told you 80s. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh it was fun. I can't wait to see where they go with this character. I now, know where. you know, this this, uh, this whole video is spoiler filled. So we're talking spoilers here. So this directly, from my opinion, ties into the Eternals, which you caught. I said that. You caught. Yes, oh, I'm giving you credit. I I'm said that. I'm giving you credit. That. Linda <laughs> spotted it. So, you know, is from based on what we saw in this movie, this weapon is clearly... A weapon the, that the Eternals would use. Yeah, so at the end, the uh, scene where, you know, the, the credits scenes, you know, say, like, what is this? You know, they're, they're yeah. viewing, like, the, the rings, right? And they say, well, it created a signal. Right. And that's the signal that the Eternals are getting. And, yeah. you know, next is going to be the movie Eternals. Yeah. So, you know, in their trailer, it says, like, we never got involved, even with Thanos took over the world and so yep. many people died. Because we couldn't get involved until we had a call. And those, I think those rings are connected with Eternals. Yep. And are calling the Eternals now to come and, you know, be part of the and it totally makes sense. world. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Because the weapon, if you compare this weapon, the Ten Rings, to the weapons that the Eternals use in that trailer. Very similar. Very similar in design. And now it's going to make... Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, I think, immortal as well. Because now he it has could. them. Right? Yeah. So, you know, so he's going to be part of the immortal world. Yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought about this pitch meeting. Did you watch Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi? Leave us a comment. (laughs) See you guys in the next one. Subscribe to the channel. Peace out. Bye.